Ah, there. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to conduct a chi-squared goodness of fit test using the TI-84 or 84 plus. Now, in the previous videos, um, they were valid. The tests shown and the calculations shown were valid for the TI-83 and 84. For this particular test, the goodness of fit test, um, you can only do this with, it's only available on the TI-84. At the end of this video, I'll show you how you can pull this off with the 83, but it takes a little bit of work up front. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, we'll use the um, example, example one in chapter 11, and that were, um, that was the results of 60 tosses of a die, right? And there were six outcomes, that being the number showing on the face of the die, one to six. We had the observed frequencies of those outcomes. And then assuming that this was a fair die where all of the probabilities were equal, we had some expected frequencies, right? That was just the total n, 60 times each one of the probabilities. So we would expect 10 of each, and of course we didn't get 10 of each. We've got these observed frequencies. So we're going to test whether or not this is a fair die, or whether or not these observed frequencies are you know, significantly different than what we expected. Okay, so going over the TI-84, we're going to want to enter these two lists, observed frequencies and expected frequencies. So I'm going to go to STAT, and I'm just going to hit ENTER where it says end EDIT, and that will allow me to edit the lists. Um, so I'll hit ENTER. That takes me to my lists. I've actually already entered this data in here, but list one will be the observed frequencies, so we have a 7 enter, 6, enter, and you enter all of them in. Then you go over to list 2 and you enter in the expected frequencies and those are all 10s. Okay, so once you have your two lists of observed and expected frequencies, it's really quite quick and easy. You just click on STAT. You are going to do a test, a chi-squared test. And you could scroll up and get there faster, but I'll scroll all the way down to the new screen and eventually you will see a chi-squared test and a chi-squared GOF. We are doing the chi-squared GOF. That's goodness of fit. So we'll go there. We'll hit enter. And it's asking for the observed list of um, frequencies. And that is L1, but that was left over there. If I wanted to put L1 in there, I'd hit second one. That gives me L1. And then I'd go down to expected, I'd hit second, two, that gives me L2. My degrees of freedom is the number of outcomes minus one, so that's five. And I'm going to calculate, hit enter, and I get um, two main pieces of information. 6.4, that's chi-squared, that's the test statistic of 6.4. And the P that they're giving you here in the output is the p-value, so it's 0.2692. Um, is the p-value. And for this type of test, that is certainly too big, so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis, and we would not be able to conclude that this die is not fair. In other words, the observed frequencies are not far enough from what we would expect of a fair die to conclude that it is not fair. Um, and so there you have it. You have your test statistic and your p-value, and that's really all you need. And so if this had been the TI-83, what we'd have to do is probably build this whole table over here, right? Where you get your observed frequencies, your expected frequencies, you subtract them, square it, divide by the expected, and add all those up. So you have to get your actual chi-squared test statistic by hand. You can build it in the calculator, but it's actually, it's almost easier just to do with the table. So once you have your test statistic of 6.4, what you can do is you can take that 6.4 and get the p-value, all right? But by the way, at this point, if you have 6.4 and your degrees of freedom, you can find the critical value in a table and determine whether or not to um, reject or fail to reject the null. But let's suppose we want the p-value. So we take 6.4, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to the distributions. That's that blue right above there. So I go second, distributions, and I'm going to go down for the cumulative chi-squared, right? So that's chi-squared CDF. There's two of them here. Don't do PDF. Uh, we want cumulative CDF. 
So I hit enter. And the lower bound. So I want the the probability that a chi-squared value is bigger than 6.4, right? That's the one I got. So I enter 6.4 for the lower. And then the upper, I make anything big. 1,000 will work. I had 5,000 in there earlier. And you enter your degrees of freedom, and then you hit paste. And what that does is it sticks these values into the, um, let me see what's over here, the, the chi-squared function that's built into the calculator. So basically, you're just entering the information. And when you say paste, you're saying paste it into this function. So I hit Enter. There's that chi-squared CDF. And you don't see it because of all the stuff you put in there. But if you scroll to the left, you can see how it up here, chi-squared CDF. So we hit Enter. Voila. That gives you my p-value, 0.2692. That's what we got using the GOF function. So um, it's easier and faster with the TI-84, but you can pull it off with the TI-83 if you don't mind building that table up front. And so that wraps it up for us. Bye.